Sure. Um, obviously, happy for our guys. It's been a uh, you know rough few weeks here, um, but this league is does that to you at times. And and the key is that the key is how you respond. And our guys haven't hung their heads, gotten down, um, listened to the outside noise, and not listened to the outside noise, which is good. And uh, you know, keep trying to get better. And I thought our first half was really good tonight. We were aggressive. We got some stuff in transition. We got the ball in the paint. Um, and, and I didn't think Ohio State would – I thought we'd get a thrust back in the second half, which we did. And, and we didn't obviously execute well down the stretch the last seven minutes. But um, the good part is we were in, a, we're in a position where we can learn from it. And, um, you know, whether it's making free throws or getting better shots down the stretch. Um, but, like I said, just overall um, happy for the guys because they've – They've had to endure a lot and, and continue to work and, and give us their best every day. Questions? Greg, the way Stephen played in the first half especially, uh, had to be nice to see for you after Saturday, didn't get a lot of looks in the paint. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed to make that an emphasis in the in the early going tonight. Was that from you or was that more from him? The, him well, and both. I mean, credit goes to Steve for, for playing aggressive and commanding the ball and finishing plays and um, – I mean, I was trying to – thought about even getting him more breaks, but he was playing so well. I was like, why am I going to take him out, knowing that we had a lot of game left to play? So um, I thought Carter Gilmore, too, really gave us a lot of energy, played aggressive, was on the floor, rebounds, um, those things. He brought he brought some of that spark that he had been bringing earlier in the, in the league season. Jeff? <clears throat> Greg, was this a game where in certain spurts you had different guys giving you – either a big shot or a big drawn charge or whatever was at key times and able to kind of hold them off at least to that final stretch. Yeah. I mean, that's, we made, you know, Tyler's charge right in front of me in the first half was, was big. Max's charge coming out of the timeout. Um, that was a huge play and a, and a, again, a play by a more experienced guard that, um, you know, that's, those are the things he gives us. So I think we had different guys, make plays at different times that, uh, you know, the group was very, has been and continues to be very connected and together and just tell by how they talk and what the huddles are like. And, um, you know, it was, like I said, good to see them get back to how they can be con more consistently and and uh, have some fun with it. What was your plan for Sensible and what's your assessment of how you carried it out? Well, the first couple of possessions, we didn't guard him too well. I mean, he got – he got loose. We dug too far on a three and or on the post off of him once. Um, made a tough shot in front of the bench and a little turnaround, which he has a capability of, you know, getting his own shot at any time. He's a really talented player. Um, really impressed with him on tape and and obviously his size, seeing him in person. Um, you know, he's a he's a terrific player and fortunately we got him in some foul trouble, you know, where it's the you know, it was better when we could defend him better when he was sitting on the bench. Greg, what, you you mentioned like your team hanging in with each other despite uh, losing six uh, six of seven coming into this. Um, mm -hmm. What what does it take in this league to do that? You have to have a connected group. I think you have to have a group that that doesn't. Well, I mentioned earlier about the outside noise, and and everybody goes through it. And and Ohio State's gone through the rough patches. You know, they started with some injuries and got them off track, and we find a face the same thing we were um you know we're just trying to get back to and, and it's not it's hard to just plug and play guys it doesn't doesn't work like that when you got a rhythm going and some continuity going you got your experienced guys on the floor for the most part and then when you lose that it doesn't just automatically reset to where it was when when the guys come back so i think just staying the course and i have a thing in my office um on my wall, it says trust the process and it's got some other stuff underneath it. But really, it's it sounds coach cliche, but you have to trust what you're doing day in and day out. The people around you, your, your work that you put in for the past, you know, 10, 12 months prior to this season, uh, all those things come in. And then you got teammates around you that support you and, and hold you accountable, um, you know, but also pick you up and, and keep you connected together. Thank you.
the same since hurting that ankle. Right. But you got Crowell going tonight. Is the next thing to try to find a way to get Tyler more comfortable? And consistent yeah, and he's going to slow down. I mean, I think I think he's trying to make up for lost time at times, where he's going to all of a sudden get three games missed back in in two possessions. So for him, and, he, and that's his. He plays with such a high burning motor that it makes him really good, but it also at times gets him going too fast and and something that he just has to continue to work on and slowing down and letting the game come to him and, and and relaxing specifically at the free throw line. He's much better than than how he shot the ball um, from the free throw line because he was in the 70s earlier in the year and just needs to relax and know that he's got teammates around him to, to help him out. The free throws at the end, obviously you would have liked a, a couple more to, to go in there, but also the ones Connor had at the end of the first half, the four. Uh, off the technical ones mm -hmm. uh, you know when you're not you know hitting those repeatedly like has been going on the last few games to get a string of those going and then in a close game at the end to see a couple of them has to be big for you guys yeah i mean i mean chucky getting there um you know connor i mean it's a surprise when he misses one so um that's what when that happened that's a guy i was going to send with that many free throws at the line i think the odds were pretty good that he'd find a way to knock at least three of the four down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we got to get there is one thing. Um, I mean, 22 times is good to get there. You got to convert, especially the last seven minutes. That's um, that. That's not textbook in terms of how we executed down the stretch in terms of the shots. And, and then we do get fouled. You got to convert at the line. So officials have the option now of calling a flop in the low post, and I wonder if your assessment of that at this point of the season is, has that made it clearer to you and to your guys what is allowed in the low post and no, what is not? Nothing's clear. I, I mean, and the officials have a really hard job. Um, you know, we put in so many addendums and points of emphasis, it, like, keeps going down the list. We haven't made it easier on the officials um, in, in terms of what – do they want call or what are they going to call what they tell us about? I mean, even there was a point in time earlier in the year where my players were coming to me going, coach, what, what are we supposed to do? Because we, you know, this is on one end. They tell us a, they call B. I mean, it's, it, but it's, it's so hard because the game is fast and physical. And like I said, they've, um, I've always been a fan of just call it as you see it. Don't write 10 different addendums to the rule and give the officials more things to have to worry about and think about um, because it seems like every year we're adding on to and whatever we were worried about 12 months ago, now we're not talking about. So like I said, first and foremost, they've got a hard, hard job. And uh, like I said, it's, it's easy from the sideline to when you can watch replays and, you know, I've never missed a call from the sideline. At least that's what I tell the officials, but um, it's, it's, it's hard because it's like I said, they've got so many points of emphasis in that we need to just call the game and, and um, hopefully our league, I think is doing a better job of educating and training and helping guys get better, but it's going to be a longer process. Greg, back to wall for a second. When he's not shooting well, which I'm sure you still want to go to him at key stretches. How do you balance whether, because he had a couple of sequences where he tried to post guys up late during that stretch and the shots just weren't, quality yeah, looks those couple think. i mean kick those out i mean those don't have to force things when we don't get exactly what we want i mean the post the post is always a as you've heard me call it many times a playmaking position doesn't mean you have to shoot it from there but it it's a position where tyler's a good decision maker and passer and you have pressure at the rim so that gets the defense's attention um but then if you know you don't have something you like that's fine or if there's a crowd in there that means somebody's open somewhere. So that's uh, stuff we'll continue to help him with. Greg, when you look at the stat sheet, what, what do you see as the difference in a game like this? When it's a tight game, Big Ten, middle of the season, what, what separates teams in a game like this? I think just staying the course, you know, of playing every possession out. You know, we were able to, you know, our first 32 minutes were pretty good. Our last seven or eight, you know, need to be better. So you're going to have stretches just like a season. You're going to go through highs and lows and you try to make sure the highs don't take you to a place where that you don't need to be. And you can't make sure you have to make sure the lows, you know, don't let you hit rock bottom. And the same thing within a game, 
things weren't going well in the you know, that last six, seven minutes in those timeouts. Hey, just let's make sure we get stops on the other end, no second shots, and get good shots. And as I look through the tape, we'll probably find that we didn't get as good of shots as we've got had gotten earlier in the game. Anything good? All right, thanks. I'm waiting for justice coming, right? Thank you. Another loss and a game where your coach isn't there for the entire second half. Um, what went wrong in, in this one for you as, as a unit? Um, I mean, from the beginning, you know, we didn't come out with the force we needed to. Um, you know, I take as an older guy, I take lead, uh, ownership of that. You know, that's that's on me. Um, you know, we got to come out uh, with more fight, more bite in the beginning. You know, and we wouldn't be in this position that we end up trying to claw back uh, in the second half. You guys talk consistently throughout the year about maybe not coming out with the right energy, the right effort. You were down eight nothing. Holtman calls the timeout. Um, why why does that keep happening at this point of the season? Um, I uh, couldn't tell you. Um, as I just said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. You know, um, as an older guy, I'm gonna, it's gonna be on me. And you know, next game we're gonna be prepared and, um, at Michigan to, from the start to uh, play well. After uh, Coach got uh, tossed there towards the end of the first half, I think you were one of the guys that was kind of restraining. And what was kind of going through your head during that moment? And then you know, going into the locker room, what was the feeling like for the whole team? Um, you know, I, I was just trying to over there to try and stop the tech uh, from happening. But, you know, um, the ref and the ref is going to call it if the ref is going to call it. So, so, yeah, my bad. So I was ready to go. <laughs> um, but, um, but, yeah, I was just trying to um, – I didn't want to get thrown out. And I saw the ref was already fired up. So, you know, I was – but, and then, you know, it's okay. We have, we have, we have coaches, you know, we have, uh, we have great players. So, do you think that got, that gave you guys any extra fire, or did it kind of was it kind of demoralizing for you guys going into halftime? No, no, it definitely gave us extra fire. You know, um, my teammate here, here, Ice, said like, look, like well, we gotta we gotta pick it up. You know, Holman Holman's out there fighting for us, and you know, we're not like he's not we're not giving it back. So you know, we came out second half, you know, ready to go. For Ice, uh, what was it like with Coach D. Blur leading the group in the second half? Um, it was, it was good. Um, you know, Coach, Coach uh, JD, he's an extension of Coach Hoke. You know, the staff, they do good being on one page together, communicating. So, um, you know, when Coach Hoke had to uh, step out, um, JD filled in just just fine, you know. Um, like I said, our staff, they communicate every day, so they was on one page. What worked well for you guys defensively in that final seven minutes to allow you to get back into the game? Um, you know, honestly, you know, I, I don't like to answer questions kind of without seeing the film on that part. Um, that's more I feel like I got to watch and stuff. But for me, just playing in the game, feeling wise, I just felt like we was um, just um, more more locked in on that end. You mm -hmm. know, um, after watching the film, I'll be able to tell you more. But it just seemed like it was more locked in. Yeah, it felt like we had more bite during that time. And you see, like, we was getting stops, you know, you know turnovers. So, you know, we just got to play like that for the, for the whole game. We'll be fine. So, Zed, you said at the beginning that you didn't come out with the fight and the force you wanted. Um, you guys have lost six of seven and five days to get ready for a team that had lost five of six and you're at home and you said when adam asked you why you said i don't know it looks from the outside one of the things that typically happen when this is this kind of thing is happening that there's a disconnectedness between perhaps older guys and younger guys are you guys as together as united 
as you were in the beginning? Is there any resentment of Bryce and the attention Bryce is getting, or is this team racked by internal issues because the people who watch you are trying to figure out how you can go from what you were to what you have been? Um, we're we're still a together team. Like you know, obviously we've been on a losing streak, but you know, as I said uh, before. There's no problems in the locker room. We still hang out with each other. Uh, we like each other. So there's definitely no problems there. It's just we're in the slump right now. And, you know, it's been going from game to game. But, you know, as you've seen, we have talented players. You know, we don't care that Bryce is getting all the attention. Like, we obviously, we know that he's a really good player. He's a really talented kid. And, like, we we tell him, like, look, we're, like, we're proud of you. Just keep going. Like, we don't we don't care about, about the attention he's getting. Um, just, you know, we just – we're in a little slump right now. And, you know, as I said, we just come back and practice tomorrow and then watch film and get better. For either of you guys, do you want to address that? Um, what, what was the question again? Are you guys as connected as you were at the beginning of the year? Are there internal issues on this team? Uh, I mean, of course, of course, we're um, locked in. Um, we, um, I mean, during this type of time, you know, you really get to see people's true character. You know, whenever you got um, leaders like me, Sway, Zed, you know, guys that, you know, um, I'm still just working every day, you know, no matter what the um, record is, you know, I'm working every day, coming into practice the next day, whether we won, lost, whatever, just coming in with a, um, with a steam to get better that that practice. And um, as long as you got guys doing that, um, it really keeps everybody together. Ain't nothing changed, you know. We're just trying to figure it out, though, you know, but we can figure it out all together. That's the only way. We've talked to both of you guys after games so far this year and, and losses like this. It sounds like a lot of the same things are being said and the, the solutions aren't evident. F what's the frustration level in that, that these losses keep happening, some of them close, some of them not, yet you guys can't touch on what isn't getting you over the hump? Um, obviously, it's frustrating. Like No one wants to lose, but you know, as I just said, like we're in a little slump right now but you know we've, we've been having good preparation and practice you know I just could like could uh say something like our pre preparation for this game you know it was really good and we were locked in it's just you know we just falling up short at the at the end of the game so you know we just it just boils down to practice and making sure everyone's ready Ice what did you see as the difference in this game I know you said you like to watch film before you break down specific things but like what separated Wisconsin from you in this game? Separated them from us this game? Mm -hmm. um, they, I mean, they came out in the way that they started the game. Um, they started the game more hungry. Uh, first half, I believe we went down 16 or 14, one of the two. And, you know, you were at home. You know, they can't come out more hungry than us. Um, you know, second half, we was able to cut it, cut it down, cut down the lead. But still, you know, this is our home court. We should be the ones coming out. Energize and you know, just jump, uh, going hard off the rip. But you know, we did it today, so that's where that's where the real difference was. The first half turnovers. It seemed like they weren't turnovers that were forced. You guys were losing the ball and and just maybe making plays where you weren't having very good ball security. Um, that hasn't really been an issue for a while. Was there anything different tonight collectively that was causing that, or or why do you think that mm -hmm. was an issue? Um, you know. Uh, Personally, um, I, I believe um, – I mean, we did have a lot of turnovers, but, you know, whenever you got seven turnovers amongst your two point guards combined, five on myself alone, you know, I, that can't happen. Coach, Coach Holt expects us to uh, have the ball in our hands, you know, um, late game situations. You know, two turnovers in the last two minutes by me, that's that's tough. You know, you can't win games like that. And that's not an X's and O's thing or a coach's thing. That's a player thing. After they tell teaches us to uh, play off two feet in the lane all the time, and, you know, I play off one and I pass and it gets a turnover. You know, it's stuff like that that's on us players. And um, we got to correct it. I got to correct it, you know. And everybody else has got to look at themselves too. Like I said, that's all it is every day, just looking at yourself where you can be better. And um, that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, like I said, um, just keep with the process. And hopefully, you know, we can turn it around right here. Zed, you said after the Minnesota loss that it was on you, the older guys, to keep the younger guys engaged, continue to keep them working hard uh, through the losing skid. Mm -hmm. Now as that skid's continued, and you said up there you're not really sure what the answer is, what do you say to those guys? Um, you said you're practicing well, you know, you're know, you preparing well, but what do you say to them to continue to keep them going when the results aren't there despite seemingly doing the, the right things? I mean, I'm going to continue to say the same thing like I've been saying, you know, keep your head up. Um, 
you know, uh, just keep working hard. And uh, we've, we're going to get out this this slump, um, you know, um, and they're continuing to do that every day. You know, the younger guys, you know, they're they're hungry, they're ready to work. So, you know, just get, get back there tomorrow and get better. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
you know, give Wisconsin credit. Questions? Chris, the, the ejection, was that something that had been building given? I've been how ejected. Does... I've been ejected twice. Uh, once I asked for it, um, the game was over. Uh, coach hundreds of games, never, never even come close to being ejected. Um, this was, uh, I, I believe, an official who I couldn't communicate with the entire game. Um, and, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, the first technical was warranted. I deserve the first technical. I don't believe the second one was, but officials are going to do what they want to do. And I've got to be more composed in that situation. I wasn't composed. That's on me. So what did they tell you as it, as it happened? Couldn't tell me anything. Couldn't talk to him. Couldn't talk to him. Sorry to cut you off. Couldn't, couldn't talk to him. Couldn't talk to him all night. All we want to do as coaches is talk to officials. Couldn't talk to one of them. When you say that, you mean like any play? Like if there was a foul, you couldn't, couldn't have a talk the whole half. Didn't want to hear it. Chris, what was your message in the locker room after the game? I know it's got to be a weird, weird spot, um, losing the game. And then also, you know, you didn't see the second half. Or at least you weren't out there for the second half. What was the message after the game? And I guess, you know, how do you keep this thing moving in the right direction? When no, uh, I think we just all have to be better. We have to. We all have to be better. You know, it begins with me. Again, I lost my composure. That's on me. It's fully my responsibility. I deserve the first technical. Uh, we all have to be better. Our start has to be better. Um, we have to play harder, and we certainly have to play smarter. We've got to coach better, all those things. Say so play harder. Do you think effort's been a big thing lately as part of this? or is I, mean, um, I, I think we play harder when we're down, and I think our effort is not what it needs to be. It certainly wasn't what it needed to be to start, but again, that's – that's ultimately my responsibility. So I want to make sure I don't attribute something to an official who didn't do it. You get the first technical from Pfeiffer. I deserved it. Yeah, you got the first Courtney. one from Pfeiffer. The offensive foul on justice was called by Courtney. Um, yes. Um, I don't know who called the offensive foul. Um, that was Courtney. Okay. Okay. The nearest official to you was Pfeiffer. Did he give you your first? Did he give you the first technical or not? I believe it was Courtney. Okay. And then Higgins gave you the. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want. Yeah, listen. I'm just trying to be accurate who it is because people want to know who ejected. Yeah, I mean, people can go back and look at the film, Bruce. I've got to be better in that situation. I would like to be able to talk to officials. That's all I would ask. Um. Again, I've coached hundreds of games and not gotten thrown out. Um, the first technical was warranted. I thought it was a flop. I think the video concluded that it was a flop. They're trying to get that out of the game. They didn't. Give them credit. He took the hit. I believe it was a flop. I said that. I shouldn't have reacted like I reacted. I deserved the first technical. But after that, I think it was. Guard, if the option officials have to call a flop has made low post contact more clear for you to teach to your players and cleared up the ambiguity about low post contact the spirit of his comments was no it has not helped is that what you were frustrated about the apparent disparity and how it's called in this game and maybe all season I think if the flop was called much better earlier in the season and I think that uh, I've clearly done a poor job getting our guys um, to understanding uh, that, that there's a technique to that and um Again, I'm not taking anything away from Wisconsin. They beat us. I've said I lost my composure. That was on me. So I don't, I don't want to take anything away from their win. The, the catalyst for the late comeback and, and what was going through your mind when you were watching that I get in, the, in the back? I mean, I think we've we played uh, better at times when we've been down all year. And that was certainly the case. Chris, you've asked for better leadership from your veterans. Have you seen positive movement in that? And for a night like this, what did you see from your leaders? We need more. We all need to do better. We need more. The first half, uh, 
you know, this is a team that shot like 33% their last game and uh, they came in and, and it was kind of reminiscent a little bit of Indiana uh, where they had good ball movement and got open shots and hit them. And uh, that was at one end. At the other end, you guys had 11 turnovers, maybe didn't handle their physicality. Just what what was missing in the first half? I mean, beyond the six points they got in the last minute, just it, w- it was very one-sided, it's, it felt. Yeah, and- we had no bite. We had no bite early. We had no bite early. And, um, you know, for really for the first <clears> – <throat> most of the first half in game 22 it, it just kind of at this point it, it seems like a repeat of what you've said after many of these same similar games i don't know just uh what can be done to shake this team out of the out of the zed called it a slump out of the doldrums right now to get it flipped back around i mean steve that's that's our job as coaches to figure out that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're working hours on end to try to do. Um, we're spending hours and hours trying to figure out um, uh, what we need to do better to get our players in better position and certainly to, to perform at a higher level. So um, if I had answers for you right now, um, then we might not have performed like we did. A couple of weeks ago after Minnesota, you, said that the hardest part of coaching is trying to figure out what's in the minds of 18 to 22 year old kids. Do you have internal issues on this team that you're battling as a staff that as they were at the beginning of the year, emotionally, no resentment over Bryce's success, anything like that? Yeah, I don't really see that Bruce, uh, as being a significant issue. Um, and, uh, if I did, I wouldn't tell you, but I don't, I don't see that as being an issue. Um, so uh, I think our guys are, they like each other. Um, I have challenged our leadership and, and I've been open about that. Um, but again, that's on all of us. Chris, sort of to follow up with what Steve was asking, Zed, Ice, any of the guys we've talked to after losses have said a lot of the same things without much changing. You've said a lot of the same things post game. Is this in need of a, a, a bigger shakeup than what you guys have done? Is that even a possibility at this point in the season to do something different? I don't know if that's practice. I don't know if that's game. I mean, is if, if what you're saying isn't changing, is there something else that needs to be done? Well, I mean, I think we've had some some efforts that have been good in this stretch uh, where we have not been rewarded with a win, um, and certainly stretches of play that have, have been good in this stretch uh, where we have not um, – not won the game and not received the outcome for, for a variety of reasons. Um, so I, I don't look at this stretch as saying we play poorly in every game. Um, I think there have been games where we've played well uh, for the most part and lost. I thought we played very well at Rutgers and lost. Uh, I think there's also been games where we played uh, just too poorly in too many stretches. And um, tonight our turnovers throughout the game were a significant issue. Um, our lack of uh, just bite early was a significant issue. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I take responsibility for, I just don't think we played as poised as we needed to. So um, I don't look at this stretch as saying, you know, it's been the same story every game. Um, it hasn't. Um, and as far as uh, significant changes, Again, those are things that we'll address as a staff and uh, spend a lot of hours trying to figure out um, if we need to make significant changes. Chris, when when you have uh, – your veterans aren't maybe giving you as much in-game production as I'm sure you probably hoped for at the beginning of the season. When those guys – you're asking them for more leadership and they're struggling in games, how difficult is it to lead when your shot hasn't fallen, when you're turning the ball over, or just not – performing maybe at the level that would help create a winning performance. I feel like a guy like EJ Liddell on this team, when you know he's going to lead you in practice, you know he's going to do all those things he did off the court, and he's going to go out and get you 15 to 20 a night. Like, you don't seem to have that right now. How, how hard is it to lead when you're not producing in a game? You know, I, I mean, I I think, um, you know, the good ones find a way. But obviously you're um, – it helps if your best players are your best leaders. 
and that was certainly the case with with him and his voice was consistent and his approach was consistent uh every day uh, but he also had help with that you know he had some older guys with kyle and uh, justin and other guys who were helping so it's not on any one or two specific guys i think um, there needs to be a better collective effort. We've got to figure out how to uh, reach them at a higher level. Um, again, this is um, this is my and our responsibility. And, um, you know, um, you know, we're going to work extremely hard to do better than what we're doing.